Hello everyone, it's Alexor. So let's go over the classes in Last Epoch. There's, I'm going to give you an in-depth overview of what they do and which one to choose. I already told you the ones to start with are really the Sentinel. Over here specifically the Paladin. Mastery. This is a good one to start with. It's a healing tank or the Acolyte with the Necromancer because the minions do all the shit for you. This is a good start, but I still want to go over all of them. In case you just have a, a specific playstyle, because they're all very different in what they do. So there are five base, base classes, as, as you can tell, these five people over here. And each of them has... You can choose from three masteries, right? The mastery you choose, it's in the campaign at around level 15, 20, something like that. The mastery you choose is permanent for that character. You cannot change it once you've chosen... That mastery it even shows you on the character screen over here this is a warlock this is a shaman this is a paladin you can't change these anymore if you want to have a different mastery you have to uh, make a new character like this and then play him differently and you always start with the base class right that's it the masteries give your base class a certain deviation or more focused direction on, on what it can do um, for example, with the mage, I'm going to show you this later as well in detail. You have the sorcerer, which is your basic spellcaster. Or you have the spellblade, which is a spellcaster with melee weapons. So you can enchant your weapon and make it stronger. This gives you a sort of the idea of what these masteries actually do, where they go. The mastery has to be chosen. You cannot just sit with the base class. You have to do that. And you can even take into the other masteries to an extent. If you're in your passive trees within the game, this is the passive tree for Acolyte, you see this over here. And you have your masteries. And for example, I chose Warlock here as my mastery, so I can go with the whole Warlock tree. But I can also tag into Lich, for example, or the Necromancer, but only up to the middle where this, this chain is. The rest of it is locked. So this means even though you chose a mastery, you can still tag or skill into the other classes or masteries to an extent which gives you unlimited possibilities because if you go into a certain level you also get these spells like the first base spells from that mastery it's actually kind of crazy so you can for example do the warlock but still get the sacrifice or the skeleton mage if you also take into this if you want to have a warlock that also has the, the uh, skelly mages you can do that if you want to do that and so this is very it gives you unlimited possibilities it is a bit overwhelming in the beginning, so at first I would recommend you stick with your chosen mastery to go over this, because over here these are the strongest ones usually. But you can do it later in the game if you want to play around. So let's go with the classes, shall we? You, we start with the Sentinel on the left over here. This is your Warrior Knight kind of type. It's a tank, it's strength, it's one of the tankiest classes in the game. Mostly melee and you can dual wield weapons. So instead of the shield, you can also run two swords or axes or whatever you want to play with. This class also has the spin to win. You may be familiar with this from other um, ARPGs. This one, it's called the Warpath. It's basically when you spin all the time and do damage that way. This is what this class has. Oops. I don't know what just happened. <laughs> and the main damage types are void damage, physical damage, fire damage. And this is done via the masteries. So let's get over these. The Void Knight is, yeah, as it says, a Void Damage Knight. And it's actually the only class in the game currently that has Void Damage as its main thing. Meaning from all the... Yeah, the Void is an entire thing in this whole campaign or in the lore of this game. And it has Time Rod, for example, which is basically the damage over time thingy. It's just a different type of damage but it also has erasing strike for example pretty crazy unique spells um which one was it no i think it was this yeah killed enemies killed are hit by this hit are erased from existence replaced by void rifts so you don't just kill them they actually just vanish and then a void rift is at their place and there was also another thing Oh yeah, this one. Combo skill that first sends enemies forward in time by 5 seconds and reactivate the skill to bring those enemies back to your timeline early. So there's a crazy thing you can do with, with time and yeah, the void thingy with this one. It's very interesting if you want to uh, play around with very unique mechanics for your, for your tank. I keep clicking this. I want to spin him, but I can't. 
Then the next thing is the Forge Guard. This is based around this... Where is it? There, Manifest Armor, so you can create your animated armors. You might also be familiar with this. It's a minion, right? From, from other games. And it mostly is about physical damage, bleed, and yeah, this, these attack minions. Currently, that class sucks <laughs> by the time of making this video, or that mastery, I should say. Um, so you're better off not playing that. There are all even memes about this, so I hope they buff it, but right now it's it's pretty bad. But it's about the tank with the armor minions. Then we have the Paladin. This is what you should start with if you never played any sort of game like this. This is your healing tank, and I have actually a build with it well. I just never die and sit at 10,000 health, no problem, um, most of the time, which is kind of crazy. So this is about healing and fire damage and also tanking. So, for example, what the healing hands does is when you when you spell it, uh, spec it right later is you heal yourself up. That gives you even more ward, so more health. But at the same time, you do damage while you heal yourself to everyone around you. So it's kind of crazy how, how this operates. This is a very strong class right now. So that's for your tanky sentinel kind of play style. Another thing, another thing I didn't mention is if you go on your skill tree, right? This is where you actually level up your skills. You will see this later when you play through it. You can actually see each and every spell you can have. If you go into the Forge Guard, you get these. If you go into the White Knight, you get these. If you do Paladin, you get these. I'm playing the Paladin, for example. And uh, and the side of these, there is all these little symbols, right? And they tell you what damage type this skill can go towards or what it is for example the lunge over here right that lunges at the enemy it starts as a physical damage type you can turn it into fire which is the fire symbol or void which is this purple thingy and if you go into it you can see it is probably yeah over here there is this fire symbol and it says torchbearer lungs lunges base physical damage is converted to fire Consequently, this damage scales with fire damage, but not increased to physical damage. Okay, so you can actually turn this into a fire damage. Over here, it's Void. Yeah, Voidbringer. Lunge space physical damage is converted to Void. So this is, so you have to skill down here to turn into Void damage. And Bleed then also, this also applies to the damage over time things. Before you had Bleed, which is a physical damage over time. Now you have Time Rod, which is the Void damage over time. Same for Fire, it makes probably easy to understand. You have Fire and then Bleed turns into Ignite. When they burn, they take damage over time. So here you can actually see what you can go with. For example, the Javelin, you can also turn into Lightning Damage. It doesn't have any cold damage here. Because this class doesn't have cold, right? But with these things, you can see what direction you can go with a spell. Or with spells. So as you can tell, Paladin only has Fire, right? Void Knight really only has Void. And the Forge God has Physical, mostly, or Fire. So you can choose between the two. If you base, you can usually choose a lot more, like with Smite, for example, which has all three. So this is just a great addition for you to know what you can build around, because you, you really want to focus on one damage type mostly, sort of should choose between one, and focus in on that, because you want to have items that buff that damage type you're playing right now. And as I mentioned in the other video, we will go over respecking. You can actually play all the things later, Easily, you don't have to replay the end campaign every time. Once you're at the monoliths, you can respec everything. And just, for example, change your, I don't know, fire, fire acolyte over here to necrotic damage or minions. Um, you can choose, you can change this entirely. The only thing you can change is your mastery. But damage types, spells, everything can be changed without, um, without much issue. The next thing is your rogue, this lady over here. The rogue is... The assassin, ninja, and ranger all in one. As you can tell, she's, she's currently wielding that bow. Because she has shurikens and a smoke bomb. And so, so it's really the ninja assassin kind of thing. Playstyle. It's mostly melee, except if you go with the marksman mastery. We'll go into this later. Which is then the only class that has bow and quivers. Everything else is mostly melee, like the Blake Dancer. She has lots of defensive options, like dodge and glancing blows, meaning the enemy's hit doesn't hit you at all, because she's very squishy and this is sort of the playstyle. It's sort of a hit and run playstyle, right? You, you cast your smoke bomb, you make some shots, then you move out again with shift, for example. This is a blink. So it's a very hit and run kind of idea. 
Uh, let me check. It's mostly physical and poison, but all, they're also good fire builds. Yep. The marksman especially has some items that are mostly focused around fire. So yeah, that, this is a very interesting class. I think it has very, very um, a broad range of things you can do. So um, let's look into the Blade Dancer. So Blade Dancer is basically just your classic assassin rogue kind of thing, where you have the dancing strikes, dual wield daggers, for example, right? The classic thing. And you have, um, where is it? The Shadow Cascade. The Shadow is a very interesting mechanic because if you cast a Shadow, it mimics, it, like it casts a copy of yourself and then mimics the next skill you use. So you have sort of the, the double Shadow thingy. It's the only class that does that to. Uh, Confuse the enemy, so to speak. So this is your um, dagger, melee, shadow jump and run kind of idea. And with the marksman, very obvious what it is. It's a bow and arrow. The, the classic thing is the multi-shot, right? Where you shoot more than one. Oh, wait, that's not it. What's the shade? Arrow, arrow storm. That's wrong. It's called multi-shot. I guess this is old. Anyway, it's a bug. <laughs> it should say multi-shot. Anyway, you shoot more than one arrows at the same time. You can give them different uh, damage types, like fire, for example, I think poison. Um, and most of the damage with these scales with the bows themselves. There are some crazy unique bows. For example, the Dragon Song, which casts a huge AoE fire dragon spit, so to, so to speak, into the enemies when you crit. So this is also a pretty cool class. A little bit underpowered right now. Could, could use some help because synergies between these are a bit lacking. But it's still very much fun. Now we have another very interesting one. This is the Falconer. One of the most recent uh, added classes or masteries to the game. And you have one uh, minion. This is your Falcon. But it's different because it cannot die. It's immune to damage. Um, different than any other classes with minions. And it buffs your own attacks. Or it does, for example, the dive bomb over here. AoE damage the Falcon brings into the... the the game and you have explosive traps and the net to entangle people so this is a, a special minion class buffing you and himself so the main key thing of the falcon is to go for offensive damage with your minion you don't need to care about minion health or whatever you just power damage on the falcon a very very fun class also very strong right now so definitely check check this out then we go to the mage Every RPG, a fantasy RPG, I should say, needs a mage, right? The mage is your classic spellcaster. He has some key skills like the the wall, flame ward, which is a shield around you. And the glacier, you know this, like your, your ice thingy. So he does all the things with elemental damage, right? You have cold, you have fire, you have lightning. And it's very a very squishy, very squishy class. So how he circumvents this is by getting ward. What is the additional thing? And we'll go over this also later. You have health, and then you can also have ward on top of that, which is like a shield, right? Over your health. So this is what you can create, for example, with hitting people. The Spellblade does this a lot. When you hit enemies, you gain ward. Or you have the Flame Ward, which is a... Yeah, see, burst of 400 ward immediately, and then, like, ward fades over time, right? So it doesn't stay on you. So this is the, the mage. Um... Yeah, the mage is also usually the flashiest class because you have all these fancy explosives and lightning and fire and things and novas around you. So if you if you like visually stunning things, the mage is definitely um, for you. The warlock later also, so definitely check that out if you want. Um, and he also has to spell critical strikes a lot. So this is your base class and you have the sorcerer. This is pretty much exactly how you know. This is your main mage, how you know it from other games. You can... See the meteor, you can rain down meteors on people. You have your, what's it, it's a static orb around you, a lightning ball, and you have your ice barrage. And you can even do a black hole in this game. You can summon the black hole that pulls people in. So the sorcerer is your main spellcaster and can do spell critical strikes. And yeah, that's pretty much what he does. Classic mage, pretty simple. Then we have Spellblade, as I said earlier, this is the combination of a melee attacking class that also does spells. So you have your Shadow Strike, which sort of enchants your melee attack with Frost, but you can also change it, I believe, into Lightning, I think. Don't quote me on that. 
and um, or you have your flame reef and this one the enchant weapon is a classic so the next attacks gain more damage for five seconds this kind of stuff you also have a surge which is a blink that also does lightning damage so he is and he gains his health only through ward by attacking so this is this class is very interesting you constantly have to be attacking to gain to keep your ward up otherwise you die fast so uh, it's not easy the spellblade is not an easy class but it's a, a very interesting unique fun class on the topic of unique classes, if you ever played Dota or Dota 2, you might know of the Invoker, right? Which was the class that has a ton of different skills because it depends on what runes you have. This Rune Master is sort of the same idea. You have the Runic Invocation. It says here, whenever you directly use an elemental skill, gain one rune of the corresponding element. Meaning if you cast a fire skill, a fire spell, you gain a rune of fire. If you cast a frost skill, you gain a rune of frost. And the combination of the three runes you have creates a different spell if you cast runic invocation. For example, if you have casted three fire spells, this gives you three fire runes, and then you have a specific fire spell. If you have all the three runes, you have a mixture of all the three. So this class has, I uh, gotta check, um, a total of 40 distinct spells. Because, of course, the combinations of all the three runes and all the three thingies give you 40 different spells with all the other ones. Just in this one mastery. So the rune master is really crazy. It does a lot. And you can have a lot of fun in all the flashy spells you want to have. It's all in this one, one class, really. So that is kind of crazy. I haven't played him yet. I still need to do it. I will do it soon, probably currently playing on the Warlock. But, um, yeah, this is a... A class you definitely should check out. But it's not easy, right? Definitely check out maxroll.gg, great website. There are leveling guides for the Rune Master so you actually understand what it does and where to go with it. It's not easy, but very, very powerful and a lot of fun. It's very, very special in how it works against, compared to like Diablo. All right. Next one is our Prime List over here with his bear. This guy. The Prime List is a strength character, but he has also sort of int thing is with him but mostly it's about minions all transforming for example the primalist has the beastmaster which is the minions or the druid which transforms into other shape-shifting forms of yourself like a bear for example right you know the druid from other games pretty simple the minions are a bit different because they are companions they still get minion bu minion buffs but companion mean they are not exposable like they are with the acolyte which we'll go into later um, if a minion dies, it doesn't really die, it is down, so it's lying on the ground, and you can revive it. So you really have to look at your minions to survive, and you can use the skills of the minions as well. They have their own skills you can use. And they buff you, you buff them, etc. So this is this is pretty much what the Beastmaster does. He has all the minions, he has, you have a raptor, you have a bear, you have a saber tooth, frenzy totem, and a scorpion. So he has all the minions. The idea is you have your minions that do a lot of damage for you and with you and you look yourself about survivability because the primalist has one of the highest support for endurance and endurance means once you get at a certain endurance threshold which is for example 50 percent of your health once you get below that you take way less damage so once you get below 50 percent damage it really slows down so you that creates a lot of survivability and you have like a berserk mode once you are below 50 percent you do more damage this is Beastmaster, mostly with companions, and as I said, they are not as exposable. Then we have the Shaman, which has a different sort of it. This is a strength int kind of class, because you have a lot of spells you cast, like the Avalanche, or the Earthquake, and the Tornado. So this is the sort of the Earth and Mastery, so to speak. And he plays a lot with Totems, like you get the Storm Totem, which casts Lightnings. And Totems are basically stationary minions. That's what they are. Pretty much. And they also get minion buffs. So this helps you with that. Um, so you cast your totems on the ground. And every single spell you have. Or most of them I should say. Can actually turn be turned into totems. Except for the avalanche I believe. Um, but you can even create upheaval totems. If you spec it in your skill tree. So he's just plunging down all the totems. And then. This is how he does damage. Right now this class is pretty bad. <laughs> I will say you this. I have tried it for 8 hours on stream to make a Lightning Shaman or a Frost Shaman happen. It just doesn't do any fucking damage. So he needs some love. 
but I like the idea of it. Then you have the druid, this is the classic thing you know from all the other games. You can transform into another thing, for example the werewolf form, you can transform into a bear. You can summon this brigand, you can also transform into that is brigand form. And you have a swarm blade form, which is some sort of insect thingy that does, also does more um, damage. So you can transform in all the kinds of different things and you can also switch back and forth between these. This is called the stance dance, right? So you go into the werebear, then you go back into human form, then you go back into spriggan form and get all the buffs and place down your totems because the spriggan has some fawn totems or whatever. So this is basically what you do with this guy. It's mostly melee and physical damage. Alright, and then we come over to our Acolyte, which is one of my favorite classes. This evil lady over here, which... You can tell brings up that skeleton and she has some some issues this is basically the evil mage right that uses like skeletons and blood skills and profane veil infernal shade these kind of things and you can summon or even harvest like it's a sort of evil mage thing it's a spell cast it's an int class so she's very squishy usually as well and she also the only class that has necrotic damage, right? Or that death can cast on necrotic damage. She mostly revolves around necrotic damage, physical damage, and poison. Physical damage being bleed as well. So this is basically the idea. One key thing she has that is different, she has curses. So you can curse your enemy. This is basically just an AoE spell on an area that debuffs the enemy so your attacks do more damage. And she can use her own health to power herself up, especially with the Lich. Which class over here? Um, so, yes, the Necromancer, very easy, very simple. You create or you bring up from the dead, the undead, the skeletons, right? You have your skeleton mage, you have just regular skeleton warriors you can cast, you can summon rafts. You can even assemble an abomination that eats up all your other minions and makes itself into a big thing that dies over time. You can summon a, a golem and these kind of things. You can also sacrifice them, right? Rips apart an allied minion dealing physical damage, so you can make them into explosive bombs. Or you have Infernal Shade, which slowly kills them but gives AoE damage. So it's a very evil dark arts mage, right? And the Necromancer especially, especially is just it's all minions. The minions do all the work. You only focus on running around and not getting any damage. So the golem, for example, also has a um, acro thingy, so he, he gets bigger, and then people are like the enemies are mostly attacking him and not you. So you can just do your things on the side while the minions do all the damage for you. So this is a good starting class because you are rarely attacked directly. The minions do all the stuff. The only drawback is right now in the game it's not very easy to see how much damage your minions actually do in. In raw numbers you only see the percentage whereas with all the other spells usually you can see how much damage it does so it's a bit difficult to see your dps increase um but yeah you just cast your minions like there's also something called a swarm answer where you have like 10 minions running around um shooting at the enemies and there's also lots of cool things you can make multiple scout mages you can make one big one super huge guy and there's also items that buff this so you have a wrath lord which is one big Wrath who snipes down the enemies instead of smaller ones. There's cool things with this class you can play around with. Then we have the Lich. The Lich is an interesting place there. You have this thing over here, Reaper form, so you can tra transform into a different form, which is the Reaper, right, with his scythes, two of them, and melee attack people. So that's the main idea of it. You have an aura of decay as well, it's an aura around you, and Death Seal, these kind of things. You can also um, fear people, enemies, so if they see some of these abominations running on, they run, actually run away because they're feared. Lots of cool things. And the Lich is sort of a risk-reward playstyle because you can sacrifice your own health to increase damage. But you are in melee form, so it's a bit... It's very a, a risky playstyle, how much you want to sacrifice of your own health to do more damage. But it's sort of the melee scythe reaper thingy that is kind of cool actually. I still have to play this as well, by the way. Uh, the spells are mostly ranged, but the attacks are melee. And oh yeah, it's also leeched. You have leech, so um, you leech um, HP of the enemies by hitting them or killing them. There's also rip blood, I believe, where you literally rip blood out of the enemy. The acolyte has this, the base class. Doesn't show it here, yeah. 
or you rip blood out of them and you give yourself some health through that. And the last one for now is the Warlock, which I'm currently leveling up. Fun class as well. The Warlock is your DOT specialist. Damage over time. All right, this is what he does perfectly well with, especially... Uh, it's not on here. Um, there is a spell. Oh, this one. The Warlock can use this rare. The Spirit Plague curses the target with a powerful necrotic damage over time effect. As well as Bleed. So you have with Cophonic Fissure. Opens an infernal fissure in the ground, dealing fire damage over time. And you can turn this into bleed damage. So um, it actually turns into a blood gudge. A completely bloody rip in the in the floor. It looks really good. You actually got to play this class. It looks really good. And this sort of gives people a damage over time. So this is mostly focused on damage over time. And you can also play... I played with Harvest, so you can also actually hit people with melee attacks. So you don't die too fast because you get a lot of ward also later. Your shield, right? Because she herself doesn't have much health. And is quite squishy. The Warlock plays with fire, necrotic poison and physical damage. Curses are also very strong with the Warlock. Uh, cursing enemies and uh, here soul feast feasts on the souls of cursed enemies dealing necrotic damage to them and drawing fragments of their souls back to you <laughs> well written very well written um but yeah this is a very powerful evil spellcaster sort of damage class it's sort of the melee spellcaster if you want all right these are your classes i hope this helped to give you an overview as i said the necromancer and the paladin are great ones to start with um, if you want to go with the mage, then go with the sorcerer. He's very squishy in the beginning. But um, the spellblade and the rune master, I think, are a bit too difficult. So yeah, if you don't want to have any issues, the tank is always the easiest. The warrior, right? The sentinel. Then go for the paladin. That's the easiest one to start with. I hope this helped. To give you a first overview of the classes. Now, these are not set in stone. They're constantly changing skills and damage types. And even introducing new skills completely. Like the Primalist recently got a new spell uh, scale entirely, the Gathering Storm. So this might all change. You have to look at it, what it is right now. But this is sort of the base idea of the classes. And they will also be adding new masteries going forward. They already announced that. So uh, maybe I have to do an update on this video. I hope it helped. Let me know in the comments if you have any more questions. If anything is unclear, I should cover in the videos going forward. Definitely go down and like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.